Yo, it's Michael coming at you from my room. I'm going to show you my analog video gear. Making this video just to kind of go over some of my stuff, my process, or maybe not too in depth, but just some of the gear. Just to show what's up, how stuff works, how I do my visuals, and uh, yeah. Um, so to start with, this is my my baby. This is my SEMA SFX9 video effects mixer. Got it from a teacher for free. He had it in his garage and didn't need it, so it's like my uh, my go-to kind of mixer, and I usually use it to to key um, between sources. I guess I really should start with my laptop because um, that's where I have a lot of my source content and stuff um, and the reason well you might be wondering how if my stuff is um, all analog how is it that my stuff can run through uh, my digital footage can run through my laptop and that is using downscalers. If I can get the um, test card to disappear, there we go. <laughs> um, so basically, I just got like the HDMI output running through this little box video converter. You can get these on Amazon, um, and it goes straight to my gear. I got uh, S video and composite. Going into uh, this circuit bent box uh, by coolpix.biz, cool um, little company I got this from, and I've got it going into this, which is my device. Some people think it's like a Tachyons Plus kind of deal, but this is a, a video switcher that I circuit bent. Um, with just a bunch of knobs and stuff just to kind of like dirty mix video signals and such um, gosh I'm kind of at a loss to where, uh, where to start but um, <laughs> yeah the, the the basics is is my laptop and I've right now I've got like my flower stuff queued up these flower videos I kind of found on YouTube and stuff like time lapses found they're really useful to kind of use um, and I use my MIDI controllers to be able to kind of modulate effects so like I like to do this scrolling type of deal yeah like that see when I have the the background the feedback loop keyed in um, I can get some really cool effects trailing effects um, I'm turning this knob because that's if this will focus um, that's where I've got the feedback loop kind of running so I can like strengthen it or weaken it or whatever whatever um, and so for some reason it's kind of glitchy which I like um, I'm not gonna mess with it it, it does this weird thing <laughs> um, where the, the loop is not very stable. It looks even uh, even cooler on my CRTs like that. Uh, but yeah, just a whole bunch of effects can change the color of stuff if I want to. Using this MIDI controller, I've mapped out a bunch of effects. So really using uh, the best of both worlds when it comes to digital and analog um, kind of giving what this this stuff can offer. I can even uh, can even mirror it if I want to. I didn't map that control yet, <laughs> but uh, this is a uh, an Akai Fire MIDI controller, and I just usually use it just to trigger like certain clips and stuff. Um, just you know every I've mapped a clip to each button and it'll just switch it so I can do kind of like 
performance-based clip switching and stuff. Um, but that's the digital side of things, so I was getting to this. I've got this, um, which is processing my signal. Um, if you take a look at, uh, let's see, let's try to, let's try to get a good example going. If, um, there you go. So there's, there's this first knob here. There's 14 knobs on this and I still don't know what they all do, but this knob right here has this weird kind of line going. Um, and if I, you know, add other kinds of signals and yeah, it, it's, it gets messy fast, <laughs> but uh, I really like it. Um, it. Treats me well for my needs. Yeah, there we go. This uh, this device is called the Line Arositor. I think that's how it's pronounced. You can get it on coolpix.biz. Um, the guy who made it was really nice, at least through the email <laughs> combo. Um, but this is like the signature effect that it does, is the lines, which is really cool. Um, yeah, a lot to explore there. Maybe I'll go in depth later. Um, but in order to support all of those uh, glitchy effects, you need a mixer to uh, kind of stabilize them. And this is what this does. This is a really good time-based corrector built inside. Um, and this, this I uh, use kind of just to mix between the clean and dirty versions of this, of my um, laptop signal, just so I can have a little bit more control over how strong the glitches are from this box. Um, and also I have it where it's like a feedback loop too. So some cool glitches right there. If used tastefully, it can like easily go seizure mode. <laughs> um, these are just like in these these knobs like invert the S video pins and stuff. Um, I even have let's see if I have it connected. So I, I also have the feedback loop from this mixer running through it, um, and I can like as I said before I can strengthen and weaken it. But I also have this Arduino which I program to generate a signal um, and it yeah does that <laughs> um, next thing is this Ederol V8 which uh, is really awesome for performing at live shows because of this bar uh, and other like really awesome effects and features that are just really easy to manipulate and stuff and I can like keep track of them in this uh, what am I trying to say this monitor which is like I just had because this was like supposed to be in a car back in the day where you would have a DVD player and you could watch DVDs while on a road trip or something <laughs> Um, uh, I'll go into that in a sec. Uh, there's one other thing. So the camera I'm holding right now to film this, uh, I use to create camera feedback. Um, and it goes, uh, through this Archer video processor. So I can control the brightness, the color, the, the enhancement, and this kind of does the same thing. Uh, and then it goes straight into here. So in the end, uh, the glitched out stuff goes here. The camera goes through this and then into here. And uh, you might have seen this, which is I just got a digital. Uh, not a, it's still analog, but they they wrote digital on it to make it look more sophisticated than it really is. Uh, the Panasonic WJ-AV7. I've played around with it a little bit. I like it. It's got some cool quirks, but 
Um, the time base corrector built inside is not the best, but that's another story. Um, so, I guess I can't really show you the rest of what's going on without using this actual camera, but I might as well kind of demonstrate some of the effects I'm able to pull off. Um, there's one more thing, actually. Uh, this is my, uh, kind of my fine-tuning processor. Uh, it's the last thing that goes, um, before the projector and these TVs. Uh, it's kind of like, kind of like, you know, a guitarist has a, has a specific amp or, like, e equalizer just to, um, kind of fine-tune the tone that they want to get it just right. This is exactly what this this kind of does for my um, video. And so I can increase the color and um, the sharpness, of course, the resolution. I can even increase like certain aspects of the video strength with these knobs. And the best thing I like about it is the, the depth, or the, the black restore, because without it, um, without it, it gets like really washed out grays, um, which is common in analog. So like if I turn it off and then maybe show you uh, what it looks like when it's just a black screen, so you can see there's kind of like a, a uh, gray, but when I turn this switch, it kind of takes care of that, um, that grayness. And so it really kind of gives a high contrast, not even a high contrast, just like resets the baseline uh, black level, which is really awesome. And so i move to the other side. This is a thing I circuit bent. I don't use it too often. Not in this setup at least. Um, so out of this go uh, the CRT signal, the projector signal. Um, no, this is the input from my Ederol. These are all the fancy ports and connectors and stuff. Um, and so last, but certainly not least, probably the, my most beloved part is the, uh, the projector, which the camera doesn't want to focus on. Uh, it's an Optima W5, uh, Optima WU5500. I might be wrong about that, I don't know but it's really cool, it's really bright, really pretty. And, uh, and yeah, for people who like CRTs, that's there in the closet. And now I'm just gonna kind of put together some visuals. Maybe for like five minutes, maybe three, two, one minutes, whatever. The important thing is, hello, the important thing is to connect it to the setup, otherwise there's no, <laughs> there's no uh, camera signal. So this is me zooming in and out, woohoo, and I can of course change the brightness and stuff, you can see that. Um, and, so yeah, I'm just gonna maybe do a little bit of stuff. Let's see, is it zoomed in well? I might even turn off the light. How does that look? Does that look okay? I know you can't answer because this is a pre-recorded video. But you can say yes, and I will 
time travel and hear it. So...
So, I don't think you can see me because it's so dark. Let me turn on the light. That was uh, my rig rundown. And all my friends. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you found this interesting. And, uh, hashtag healthy at home. Hashtag we're in this together. Hashtag quarantine sucks, but it's necessary. Hashtag patriot or whatever. Um, peace.